Hi, this is Mr. Bledsoe, and in this video we're going to look at the standard algorithm for multiplying two two-digit numbers, and we're going to see why it's just an example of the distributive property of multiplication. So we're going to look at this multiplication problem, 37 times 29. And as we know, the distributive property of multiplication is usually written like this, a times b plus c equals a times b plus a times c, where a, b, and c are any numbers. So if we use the distributive property to write 37 times 29, the part on the left side of the equal sign might look like this, 37 times 20 plus 9, which means I'm going to multiply the 37 times the 20 and I'm also going to multiply the 37 times the 9. So the part on the right side of the equal sign would look like this. 37 times 20 plus 37 times 9. But how about if, in addition to splitting up 29 into 20 plus 9, we also split up 37 into 30 plus 7, and we write our multiplication expression like this. 30 plus 7 times 20 plus 9. Well, it turns out we can use the distributive property on this expression as well, as long as we multiply each part of our first number times each part of our second number, which means we have to multiply the 7 times the 20 and the 7 times the 9, and we also have to multiply the 30 times the 20 and the 30 times the 9. So the part on the right side of the equal sign will look like this. 7 times 20 plus 7 times 9 plus 30 times 20 plus 30 times 9. And if I wanted to go ahead and work out the actual numerical answer for this problem, I would just do each of these multiplications and then add them all together. So let's do that. So 7 times 20, 140. 7 times 9 is 63. 30 times 20 is 600. And 30 times 9 is 270. And if I add all these together, put this over here on the side, Ten plus seven, seventeen, seven, eight, nine plus one, ten. I get one thousand and seventy-three. So you may have also seen this type of problem written this way, with a box divided into four parts, and the twenty plus nine on the top, and the thirty plus. 7 written along the side and then a multiplication symbol here in the corner. And then you multiply each pair of numbers and you put the products in each of the four parts of the box. So 30 times 20 is 600 and the 600 goes in this part of the box. 30 times 9 is 270. 7 times 20 is 140. And 7 times 9 is 63. And you can see these are the same four numbers that we got when we did our uh, when we did this multiplication using the distributive property. And so this uh, this method is called the area model, or sometimes the box method of multiplication. And again, this is just another example of the distributive property. Well, this is where the standard algorithm for multiplying two two-digit numbers comes from. It's just the distributive property. So we typically write the two numbers that we're going to multiply like this, one on top of the other, line underneath, and a multiplication symbol next to it. 
And again, you can think of 37 as 30 plus 7. And you can think of 29 as 20. Oops. 20 plus 9. And we're just going to multiply our numbers using the distributive property and add them up just like we did before. And here's how that looks. Typically we start on the with the two numbers on the left hand side, the 7 and the 9. So we're going to multiply first the 9 times the 7 and then the 9 times the 30. So 9 times 7 is 63. And I write down 63. 9 times 30 is 200. 70 and I write down 270. Notice I'm lining up my place values so I have all of the ones in the ones column. I have all the tens in a tens column. Next I'm going to multiply the 20 times the 7 and the 20 times the 30. So 20 times 7 is 140. 20 times 30 is 600. And again notice these are the same numbers that we got when we used the distributive property. I'm just going to add them up and when I add them up again oops, 3, 4, 17, 18, 1, and I have 8, 9, and I get 1073. Now, there's another method for multiplying two two-digit numbers that I'm going to show you because a lot of people use this other method. And fair warning, I'm not a huge fan of this method because I think it can be confusing, especially when you get to multiplying larger multi-digit numbers. But the method does work, and it looks like this. So again, write the two numbers, one on top of the other. Now in this method, instead of doing four separate multiplications followed by addition, we kind of mix in multiplying and adding at the same time. So we start again with the 9 times 7, and 9 times 7 is 63. I write down my 3, and then I write the 6 over here in the tens column above the 3 and the 37. Then I do 9 times 3, which is 27, and I add the 6 onto that. So 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 plus 6 is 33, and the 33 goes here. So it looks like 333. Now I go to my, my next line, my, my second step here in my, in my process, and I say 2 times 7 is 14. But now instead of writing my 14 with the 4 over here in the 1's column, I kind of move over 1, and in fact some people will write a 0 there underneath the 3. 2 times 7 is 14. Write down my 4 and I write the 1 up here. And then I multiply 2 times 3 which is 6 and I add that 1 that I wrote up there to get 7. Then I add these numbers together and I get the same number that we got before 1073. So in this method it's harder to see how the distributive property is being used because again, you keep swapping back and forth between multiplying and adding. Also, it may not be entirely clear why you have to add this extra zero here for the second step. So again, I recommend the first method that I showed you, this one here, just because I think it's easier to understand and is less likely to lead to errors. But again, either one of these two methods will work.